Hi, welcome back. Today I'm going to solve this rather tricky looking exponent problem. When we raise something to the power of negative 1, is all it means is invert. So if I was to rewrite this as x to the power of 2x to the power of negative 1 fifth without the negative 1, then is what I've done is I've inverted it. So this must equal 1 over 25 inverted, which is 25. This rule here tells us that if we've got a number raised to a power and that's all raised to another power, then we can rewrite that as that number raised to the powers multiplied together. So this becomes x to the 2x multiplied by negative 1 fifth. And this still equals 25, which I'm going to rewrite as 5 squared. So multiplying this out, we get that x to the negative 2 fifths of x equals 5 squared, which leaves us with this nasty looking negative 2 fifths that we need to get rid of. So is what I'm going to do, I'm going to raise both sides to the power of negative 5 over 2. But remember, I can bring these powers down and multiply them together. So this now becomes x to the negative 2 fifths of x multiplied by negative 5 over 2. And this equals 5 to the power of 2 multiplied by negative 5 over 2. So that simplifies this side because this now becomes x and the 2's cancel, the 5's cancel and the negative signs cancel. So this is just x to the power of x equals, now I'm going to write this as 5 squared to the power of a half to the power of minus 5. So do you see what I've done there? I've kept the 5 squared. The 2 down here, I've called that a half. And then the negative 5, I could have multiplied this by a negative 5, but I've actually taken it back up here as a power, as this rule allows us to do. So why have I done that? Well, this now becomes x to the power of x equals, right, what is 5 squared square rooted? Well, it's just 5. In fact, it's plus or minus 5. And that is still all raised to the power of negative 5. Now, if we ignore the positive 5 here, we can rewrite this as x to the power of x equals negative 5 to the power of negative 5. And you should be able to see through the similarity of these two terms that x must equal negative 5. And that's the answer. Not too bad in the end. It got a bit tricky here, but the reason I did it this way was if I'd cancelled this 2 with this 2, I would have been left with 5 to the power of minus 5, and I would have missed the fact that this was actually a plus or minus 5 here. So I split it out here to make it clearer. I hope you got that. See you next time.